Yes, everything that I say at this interview will be the truth. Um, I met Donald Trump um, at some parties I attend um, that I was working um, for Mr. Jeffrey Epstein. The first time that I met Donald Trump uh, was at uh, a, a party at Jeffrey Epstein's um, mansion. Uh, we were, he was, there was a, um, an orgy going on and he was kind of watching off in the distance um, and <clears throat> and he basically asked um, if I could come over and give him um, give him a hand job and at first I wasn't very comfortable with it this was like my first or second you know first party and I, I didn't you know I, I didn't think that that was my responsibility uh, but my recruiter told me that I needed to do it, um, so I agreed to. And um, then he, you know, I, I said, I said, began to. <coughs> sorry, this is um, a little difficult. But um, Jeffrey Epstein um, is a billionaire friend of Donald Trump's that um, was responsible for throwing the sex parties. Um, <coughs> there was. Um, I originally. Um, came to New York trying to be a model and um, in my travels I met a girl named Tiffany there um, who um, was very interested in me and said that you know she that's what she did is that she helped girls you know get what they wanted and and, and she could help me get in, get into modeling that she knew a lot of um, people that were that were higher ups and that it would be no problem um, and so that's why you know she. But I would just basically have to come model um, at a couple of events and meet some people. It would be no sweat. So um, of course I went. You know that sounded like no big deal. Um, and she was recruiting the girls to come to these parties. Um, and as far as Donald Trump, um, he knew that I was 13, and I believe that Tiffany told him he seemed to take a liking to me because I was <clears throat> a, I was so young um, and um, I was also a virgin so I don't, I don't know he's it seemed like he wasn't really into having um, having girls that that were liked by the other guys he kind of you know the whole glove <laughs> he kind of liked things to be his first you know if that for lack of you know a better term but he was the one who wanted to um, get to get to a girl before everyone else did. Donald Trump knew that I was 13 um, because uh, the first the first night that I was there, uh, Tiffany actually suggested that you know, she had a whole bunch of different wigs, and I expressed interest in them. You know, I always told her that I would lo love to walk around with blue hair, and so I tried some on, and um, there was a blonde wig that you sh that that she said that looked great on me. So I wore that wig, um, and Donald Trump had specifically asked about me because I remind him of his daughter and she said well she's 13 as well so he knew the first time that he saw me but he took a liking to me because I look like his daughter journalism is dead what has yet to die is public faith in journalism what has yet to die what has yet to die is the widespread habit of mind whereby people presume that any important case of this type would be investigated by journalists and presented to them by journalists. With that investigation and representation being proportional to the importance and merit of the case. I have read the legal documents that were filed for this case. If you take the time, you can too. There is absolutely no valid reason to trivialize or dismiss the legal documents that were filed for this case. In terms of invalid reasons, if an historian 50 years from now were to look back and ask the question, how is it possible that such astounding allegations against Donald Trump were ignored for so many years? In a session? There, there are some invalid reasons that are worth noting and remarking on. First and foremost, in the year 2016, public interest in Jeffrey Epstein was almost zero. And it's difficult to remember that now. 
But really, the storm of controversy surrounding Jeffrey Epstein and his arrest came several years later. Number two, and I, I just note the autobiographical accounts of one of the journalists who handled this investigation and bungled this investigation, he, he says part of his own thinking was just shaped by the expectation that Donald Trump would lose the election, which is stupid. It is fundamentally stupid to dismiss this case because of the assumption that Donald Trump will lose the election and then it won't matter. It matters. These allegations matter. And of course, obviously, the case against Jeffrey Epstein also in its own right, on its own merits, mattered. But even if Donald Trump had never run for president of the United States, this case would matter and should have been taken seriously by journalists in a way that it, it never was. Emily Sugarman is repeatedly referred to as one of the only journalists who ever spoke to uh, the woman you've just seen on video, or perhaps the only woman. Now, Emily Sugarman was incompetent. Emily Sugarman was an imbecile, and from what I can see, she has either invented or been crucial in propounding this doctrine that we don't even know if this woman ever really existed. Note the headline here. Wait, Katie Johnson actually exists? Absurd. Absurd. Unforgivable incompetence on the part of the uh, uh, journalist here. Quote, I don't know if Johnson wrote that letter. In fact, I don't know if the Katie Johnson I spoke to is the same girl who Trump allegedly raped in 1994 or if that girl even exists. Here's the website for lawyer Evan L. Goldman of Goldman, Davis, Crumholtz, and Dillon. Now, apart from the question of whether or not it would be possible to file so many legal documents with the courts in the United States of America if you don't exist, if, if the existence of the person as such were a hoax, right? If, if it were a hoax on that level, I don't know if it's possible to file so much paperwork with the American legal system. And again, to say that there is no evidence is a lie. Three witnesses, three women who all have testimony, each corroborating the other, three women who were all in the same place at the same time and to whatever extent participating in this scenario, that is evidence. Eyewitness testimony is evidence. How dare you say there's no evidence? Do you think this guy, you, you think this distinguished lawyer, do you think he would have knowingly participated in a hoax representing a person who doesn't even exist. And this lawyer still gives interviews to this day talking about what happened. And yeah, here's the crucial, here's the crucial part. Why was the lawsuit dropped? Why was the, why was the case dismissed from court? Because this woman was afraid that she was going to be killed. And if you know anything about the Jeffrey Epstein case, if you know anything about how much money and power was supporting Donald Trump, it is not unreasonable that she was afraid that she was going to be killed. Someone stole her car and her cell phone. They received threats. It is not unreasonable at all that she was scared, and it would not be unreasonable for her to feel disappointed in the response she received from the press. She was expecting the press to leap forward and champion her case, and that never happened. It didn't happen in 2016 before the election of Donald Trump. It didn't happen after the election of Donald Trump. It still hasn't happened to this day. Journalism is dead. What needs to die next is this phony sense of expectation we have as readers that anyone else is going to do the research for us. You have to do the research for yourself. Donald Trump knew the cameras were there. In the video, he makes a point to draw Epstein's attention to them. And the video captures Donald Trump and Epstein chatting while watching a group of women at the party dance. It's not an image that matches Trump's declaration that he was not a fan of Epstein's. He Here's said, quote, quote, he's a lot of fun to be with. It's even said that he likes beautiful women as much as I do. And many of them are on the younger side.